Good morning, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the tracheobronchial tree. The tracheobronchial tree is a branching system consisting of 23 generations of passages from the trachea to the alveoli. It can be divided into the conducting airways and the respiratory airways. The conducting airways makes up anatomical dead space. It has generation 0, which is the trachea. Generation 1 is the right and left main bronchi. Generations 2 to 4 is the lobar and segmental bronchi. 5 to 16 is the small bronchi to terminal bronchioles. For the respiratory airways, generations 17 to 19 is the respiratory bronchioles and occasional alveoli. Generation 20 to 22, alveolar ducts line with alveoli. Generation 23 is the alveoli. Structure The trachea has a tube shaped structure consisting of 15 to 20 C shaped cartilage rings bridged anterolaterally by annular ligaments. These cartilages are attached vertically by fibroelastic connective tissue and allows mobility. It has a membranous lining which continues from the larynx. Its length is 10 to 13 cm. Diameter is 15 to 20 mm in adults. It is wider in men than women. It is 3 mm for a 1 year old child and increases 1 mm per year until it reaches 20 mm. Extend in adults from the inferior margin of the cricoid cartilage at the C6 level up to T6 level in full inspiration. The trachealis muscle encircles the trachea completely. It is most prominent posteriorly due to the lack of cartilage. The posterior wall of the trachea is membranous. At T4 or T5 vertebral body level at the plane of Ludwig, the trachea divides into the left and right bronchi. The trachea lies in the midline throughout most its course. At the bifurcation into the bronchi, it is displaced rightwards by the arch of the aorta. Relations Anteriorly, at the upper part of the neck, skin, fascia, and the isthmus of the thyroid overlying the second to the fourth tracheal rings. At the lower part of the neck, sternohyoid, sternothyroid, the jugular arch connecting the anterior jugular veins. In its thoracic course, anterior structures include the manubrium sterni, thymus, inferior thyroid veins, ascending aorta, brachiocephalic artery, superior vena cava, and left brachiocephalic vein. Posterior relations, the esophagus. Lateral relations, at the neck, the thyroid gland and the carotid sheath. Thoracic course, on the right side, lung and pleura, brachiocephalic artery and vein, azygos vein, superior vena cava, right recurrent laryngeal nerve, runs in a groove between the trachea and the esophagus, and the right vagus nerve. On the left side, the arch of aorta, left common carotid artery, subclavian arteries, left recurrent laryngeal nerve, runs in the groove between the trachea and the esophagus, and the left vagus nerve. Arterial supply, proximal half, is supplied by the tracheoesophageal branches of the inferior thyroid artery, the distal half and the carina by the superior and middle bronchial arteries. Nerve supply, predominantly from the recurrent laryngeal nerves from the vagus nerve, additional sympathetic supply from the middle cervical ganglion. Venous drainage to the inferior thyroid venous plexus, lymphatic drainage pre-tracheal and paratracheal lymph nodes, histology, external layer consists of loose connective tissue or adventitia, there is no capsule. The middle layer, also known as the fibromuscular cartilaginous membrane, consists of the tracheal cartilage, the annular ligaments, connective tissue, and tracheal muscle. The internal layer, 
also known as the respiratory mucous membrane, consists of tracheal glands with a ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Bronchi At the level of T5 in adults, the trachea bifurcates into the right and left main bronchi at the level of the carina to supply air to the right and left lungs. Each main or primary bronchus enters the hilum of its lung and gives rise to secondary lobar bronchi. Secondary lobar bronchi further divides into tertiary segmental bronchi, supplying bronchopulmonary segments. Right main bronchus Foreign bodies or endobronchial intubation is more likely to occur in the right bronchus as it is shorter, wider, and angled more vertically than the left. It reaches the root of the right lung at the level of T5 and lies inferior lateral and posterior to the right pulmonary artery. It gives rise to three lobar bronchi. Initially, it bifurcates into right upper lobe bronchus and bronchus intermedius. Bronchus intermedius further divides into right middle lobe and lower lobe bronchi. Relations Superiorly, the arch of the exagos vein. Inferiorly, the right pulmonary veins. Anteriorly, the right pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins anterior to the pulmonary arteries. Posteriorly, the esophagus and the exagos vein posterior to the esophagus. Blood supply is from one single right bronchial artery which arises from the right third posterior intercostal artery, common trunk with the left superior bronchial artery and the descending aorta. Left main bronchus Compared with the right main bronchus, it is longer at 5 cm and runs more horizontally. It reaches the hilum of the left lung at the T6 level. It lies inferior to the aortic arch, anterior to the esophagus and the thoracic aorta. It gives rise to two lobar bronchi, the upper lobar bronchi and the lower lobar bronchi. Relations Superiorly, the left pulmonary artery, the aortic arch superior to the pulmonary artery. Inferiorly, the left pulmonary veins anteriorly the left pulmonary veins, posteriorly the descending thoracic aorta. Arterial supply, the superior left bronchial arteries directly arising from the descending aorta and inferior left bronchial arteries directly arising from the descending aorta. In children, the angles of the bronchi and the carina are equal. Bronchopulmonary segments The right lung Right upper lobe bronchus branches from the right main bronchus about 2.5 cm from the bifurcation of the trachea. The first of two secondary bronchi produced by the bifurcation of the right main bronchus. The other is the bronchus intermedius. It divides further within 1 cm into the following segments. Epical, anterior, and posterior. It is most at risk from accidental occlusion by a tracheal tube or double lumen endobronchial tube. Bronchus intermedius divides into the right middle lobe bronchus and the right lower lobe bronchus. The right middle lobe bronchus originates from the bronchus intermedius around 2.5 cm distal to the right upper lobe bronchus. It is directed obliquely inferior, anterior and outwards and divides further into the following segments, the medial and the lateral. The right lower lobe bronchus is a continuation of the bronchus intermedius distally to the origin of the right middle lobe bronchus. It is directed posterior inferiorly and divides further into the following segments, superior or apical, anterior basal, lateral basal, medial basal or cardiac, and posterior basal. This diagram shows the right lung bronchopulmonary segments, medial view, 
This diagram shows the right lung bronchopulmonary segment's lateral view. Left upper lobe bronchus branches from the left main bronchus about 5 cm after the tracheal bifurcation. It is one of the secondary lobar bronchi. The left upper lobe bronchus divides into the superior division and the lingular bronchus. The superior division gives rise to the following segments, apical posterior and anterior. The lingular bronchus gives rise to the superior lingular and inferior lingular segments. The left lower lobe bronchus branches from the left main bronchus. It is one of the secondary lobar bronchi. It gives rise to the following segments, apical, anterior basal, lateral basal, and posterior basal. The medial basal bronchopulmonary segment of the left lung usually arises in common with the anterior basal. This diagram shows the left lung bronchopulmonary segment's lateral view. And this diagram shows the left lung bronchopulmonary segment's medial view. This diagram is the left lung medial view. left lung lateral view, right lung medial view, right lung lateral view. Structures seen during fiber optic bronchoscopy, trachea, anterior wall has complete cartilaginous bands, posterior wall is membranous. The carina separates the right and left main stem bronchi. The right main bronchus, compared with the left main bronchus, it is wider, shorter, 3 cm long, and angled more vertically. The right upper lobe bronchus occurs within 2.5 cm of the bifurcation. The right middle lobe bronchus, the right main bronchus then gives off the middle lobe bronchus. It is directed downwards and forwards. Bronchus of the apical segment of the lower lobe is located just below the origin of the middle lobe bronchus and opposite to it. The right main stem of the lower lobe bronchus continues downwards beyond this. Left main bronchus is more obliquely placed, about 5 cm in length, and further divides into the following, the left upper lobe bronchus and left lower lobe bronchus. Anatomy relevant to tracheostomy In adults, the epiglottis is at the C2 level, vocal cords at the C4, and cricoid cartilage at the C6 level. Structures encountered during surgical tracheostomy Skin, strap muscles, isthmus of the thyroid gland, anterior jugular vein, risk of life-threatening bleed if the following are missed. Thyroidia ema artery, which is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk or arch of aorta, or left common carotid artery. Brachiocephalic trunk crosses from the left to right anterior to the trachea at the superior thoracic inlet posterior to the sternum. Aneurysm of the arch of aorta. Other important structures includes the trachea itself, the thoracic duct, forms an arch about 3 to 4 cm above the clavicle on the left side of the neck. It ends by opening into the junction of the left internal jugular vein and subclavian vein. Anterior relations includes the vagus nerve, left common carotid artery, and internal jugular vein. Inferior thyroid vein travels in the tracheoesophageal groove along with the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Anterior jugular vein is formed by the confluence of several superficial veins from the submaxillary region. It descends between the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid at the midline of the neck. The venous jugular arch is a transverse trunk formed by two anterior jugular veins just above the sternum, which also receives tributaries from the inferior thyroid veins. Carotid artery and internal jugular vein run lateral to the trachea. It is vulnerable to injury during tracheostomy 
if the section goes lateral and deep. These are my references. Thank you.